Today we start a new topic, topic 3. This is very important from your knowledge point of view, because tomorrow particularly economic students would often get jobs in the banks, what I am finding. And it is kind of a beginning of kind of things you would like to know about the Indian monetary system. The banks often deal with this kind of things that I would talk about. Indian money market, because banks are very important institutions in the Indian money market. Money supply to sub dekha definitions, Vagada velocity, kind of conceptual macroeconomic issues. These are macro plus money market related issues, which is specific to say the banking sector, etc. Now, money market, what is the market? What you have seen economics, the first course that you have credited is probably the microeconomics. And in microeconomics, we do talk about a market. Market, the first thing that comes to people's mind when you go to a market is this there are some sellers who are selling something and there are some buyers who are going to buy something and they meet and the buying and selling goes on at a price and people have a choice in a free market it can be a controlled market which is a different thing in a free market people have a choice what do I if they don't like the price they don't buy it if they like the price they can buy it. Another thing about market which you must have learned in microeconomics is that market does not have a geographical boundary usually. If you say automobile market you do not see automobile market only in Kanpur and Delhi. Automobile market can be spread all over the country. Now, you can distinguish between the automobile market in Kanpur and the automobile market in Lucknow it is a different story. But if you generally call about an automobile market where automobiles are sold all right, it does not have a geographical boundary. In fact, if you open the economy, it can have an international boundary. The whole world in Mars or Moon, they do not use automobiles still. So, on Earth, you can now have automobile market of the entire, entire, entire world you can have, and that is still you can call it a market. But this kind of a thing is not under macroeconomics, this kind of a thing is only under industrial economics you teach, because in industrial economy, you study specific markets like a particular market, the pricing policies, the entry exit strategies, the kind number of firms that exist. So, you might think sir automobile market is it part of macroeconomics? No, it has a macro dimension in the sense country wide, but if you take all markets, all goods of the country, then it becomes macroeconomics. But if you pick one market, where one kind of goods are sold, one kind say automobiles, then it is part of industrial economics, it is not part of macroeconomics. So, here we have a problem, here you may be calling this sir is it macro at all? Well, it has some macro relevance, but it is not macroeconomics, it has some macro relevance. It has relevance uh, to macroeconomics from the point of view of macro policy issues, because when macro policies particularly monetary policies are adopted it has relevance for this market or the market has relevance for those policies, they matter to each other. You understand what I am saying? Like some macro policies can have relevance for industrial economics, for instance government sets a tax, profit tax. Now, this profit tax is a general tax, it is applicable to all markets. So, when you are studying a particular industry that tax that macro issue is important. That can quite be true. Now, in money market, as you know, as I have already told you, it does not have a geographical boundary in that sense, and it does not deal with it may deal with monetary instruments, but does not deal with only one. In automobile market, it does not sell only Maruti cars. In automobile market, they sell Ford, they said Hyundai, Toyota. So, the market have sub markets, you can talk about the Ford market of the automobile market in India, you can talk about the Maruti market, again within Maruti there are sub sub markets, because some people like Zen, some people like these other cars 
in SX4, some people like there can be divisions. So, what you have essentially is a structure of differentiated market. This is called differentiated products, differentiated market, which you start learning in microeconomics, carries over to industrial economics, and is very important. Now, a money market is a very differentiated market, it just does not deal with one thing called money supply. It may have relevance for money supply, but there is various instruments are there. Now, why does money market exist? What is the need? Well, why does the food market exist? We know people need food to eat to survive. So, we go to the market buy food. Then we also can go to the luxury market. We do not need to that to survive, but we go to luxury market because people have preferences for them. Similarly, in money market people have preferences for them. Now, why do money market exist? A simple reason is is part of the financial system. The financial system consists of two broad markets, the money market and the capital market. Now, in the financial economics course you would learn about capital market, in this course you would learn about the money market. Okay. So, now the reason why money market exists is also more or less the reason why the financial while the entire financial market exists. What are the reasons? At any point of time this is wonderfully explained in professor Bole's book. I use that book, I have given reference, there is that some 7 8 copies in the reserve section. Professor Vole's book explains that very wonderfully. At any point of time, there are some deficit spending units, deficit spending units. At any point of time, there are deficit spending units. in a country at the same time there are some surplus spending units. There are some deficit spending units, there are some surplus spending units. Now, these surplus units or spending units you can even include government now in this market. You can even bring in government although we do not talk about government part of the economic system, we talk about government RBI like satellites like the moon and the stars and the earth is here and the earth is the economy. But here you can even bring in government because government directly intervenes or interacts with it. So, this deficit spending units and surplus spending units essentially means that somebody who is earning more than its expenditure is a surplus spending unit, it has a surplus which we loosely call savings. And then there are deficit spending units that is they are spending more than what they are earning. At any point of time in an economy you have these two groups, they may be consisting of firms, households as well as government and other institutions all right. Now, what the monetary system or the financial system does just not the monetary system the entire financial system does is that it connects the two you bringing banks, what do banks do? Banks which is part of the monetary system connects the deficit spending units with the surplus spending units. The surplus spending units take the surplus put it in the bank and the bank then takes that surplus and gives it to the deficit spending units. And this whole concept of buying and a whole concept of borrowing and lending interest rate they all emerge all right. Why would you give your surplus to a deficit spending unit? there is a return to you that is why you would be willing to do it. Who does that work for you? Banks do that, but just not banks do that non banks also do that non banks also do that all right. The same situation government may fall into government it becomes a deficit spending unit it will have to go to the market and borrow. Sometimes it may go to another institution like RBI and borrow. So, RBI has to have the surplus economy has to have the surplus, but government can borrow if economy does not have a surplus, everybody is a deficit spending unit then government cannot borrow very simple all right. So, essentially it is a very simple macroeconomic concept that if the income exceeds expenditure you are surplus unit, if the income is short of expenditure expenditure is the more you become a deficit unit then you have a problem. The problem is solved by the financial system both the capital market as well as the money market what it does they have are they are full of what you what is known as um, full of various institutions who connect the two.
कैपिटल मार्केट में स्टॉक मार्केट में क्या होता है कैपिटल मार्केट में विच वी रेफर टू ए स्टॉक मार्केट क्या होता है वॉट डू यू डू समी सेल शेयर समी बाइज शेयर वॉट इज इट समी बाइज द शेयर हैव सर प्लस एंड समी सेल शेयर डजन हैव अ सर प्लस नीड्स मनी लाइक कंपनीज और राइट और डिवेंचर्स और बॉन्ड्स और वट एवर ओके सो like any country the indian financial system therefore i'm quoting professor bhole's book the indian financial system is a complex and closely connected or interlinked system of institutions and often institutions are there in the background but the agents do the work on behalf of the institutions like brokers dealers even life insurance companies have agents life insurance company doesn't come you don't go to the agents do the work they come to your house Since I joined IIT, they used to come to my house very regularly. These days they don't. It's an important source of income for the agents. This is the middleman who sells insurance policies to you. Life insurance people do not come. They are like licensed agents. They used to come. They used to have a license number. I remember when they used to sign my form. I used to fill it out. I buy an insurance policy. They had a license number. I remember. Even in post offices, I have seen agents. They have a license number when they sell you savings certificates. All right. So there is a complex or interlinked connected systems of institution agents practices is very important even a household has practices i eat this kind of food i sleep at a particular time i play at a particular time i watch this kind of movies there are always practices similarly institutions etc markets have practices like if you go to the farmers market which is held in kalanpur is a practice of holding that market um on a large scale on uh, two or three days of the week only i think it's tuesday friday and sunday three days of a week this is a practice convention all right and therefore it has various kinds of markets in it the financial system the two broad markets are money market and capital market then there are sub markets then there are transactions that go on there are claims when i give money to you have a claim on you you are supposed to return that money to me there are liabilities if you borrow money from me you have a liability towards me i have a claim means automatically it infers that you have a liability if come if a bank gives money to you a company bank has a claim on you and the company has a liability towards the bank similarly when we keep money in the bank we have a claim on the banks that it is my money and this is what you are supposed to do with it and the bank has a liability towards me so claims and liabilities are like flip side of the coins two sides of the coin it's the same thing so this is what the financial system is all about a bunch of institutions agents practices are there conventions etc markets transactions that goes on various kinds of transactions secondary market transaction primary market transaction all sorts of things claims and liabilities and what they are concerned about there are three broad items they are concerned about the financial system the financial system is concerned about concerned about three broad systems they are concerned about something called money which we are trying to define right from topic 1 cash etc they are concerned about something called credit which you know where it originates somebody lends money like the banks can lend money to a company credit and also it's concerned about which you are more mostly interested because that's where we are where um, your interest lies i have seen not so much in money market or traditional macroeconomics people like me who have been teaching macro etc what your interests are to join an investment banker etc is something called finance finance is more than credit what you are interested in that's why you want to study sir financial economics course hai hum log ka mba ima department mein wo finance course hai can we take that as open elective this students often ask me this what interests them i understand why because it's a very modern thing and finance has existed since corporate sector came into existence and you know corporate sector what it is the companies which are called which write ltd at the end 
which means they are limited liability companies you know that corporate sector limited liability companies why they are called it is not the traditional ownership companies and partnership companies used to have though bhai partner hai ya baap beta partner hai do friends partner hai teen friends partner wo chala gaya kam hota hai chota chota shop mein hota hai aaj kal hai corporate world that's where finance came into existence finance never existed the world before the corporate world was created and the corporate world was created by basically limited liability companies ltd either private limited or public limited you probably know that if you are learning industrial economics you have an industrial economics course this semester so you would learn all that i don't have to teach so the finance came where you have heard of words like shares debentures etc it's something different from credit credit is a loan basically you give a loan to somebody create a debt and you get a fixed interest payment against it and you are supposed to return the money shares are very different thing you buy a share the company may not return the money to you for 15 years 20 years now what to do no problem you go to the secondary market when you go to the secondary market like a stock exchange you sell the share so you have a secondary market to sell it off and shares when you buy them you get an annual return called dividends and sometimes dividends are not a compulsory obligation on part of companies to give to you if company makes good profit then they will share that part of the profit with you as dividend if company doesn't make good profit it will not share that but there are various kinds of shares there are preference shares where dividend has to be paid but still companies can skip dividend for one or two years and pick up pay a backlog but in normal shares called equity shares ordinary shares dividend is not compulsory but if the company makes good profit you get a good dividend but the preference shares are even if a company make good profit or a company makes a bad profit you get the same dividend so it's you to judge i mean it's up to you to judge whether you want to buy a preference share or an ordinary share so it goes into that but companies have a debt structure debt credit etc called debentures where it's something like a loan you buy a debenture it's like a bond a fixed interest return will be given to you by the company so many people want wish to buy debentures because it doesn't depend upon company profit it's part of the company cost the company will have to make that interest payment to you it's not part of not linked to profits and then it can fluctuate so many people prefer to buy when they invest in corporate companies by debentures because buying a debenture connects you with a fixed interest payment like a bond you know bond from the previous topic the top first topic three kinds of bonds are there you have any question on this what i have said so far anything to ask me nothing so this money and credit and finance all has to do with money and why money i would explain that to you why money market has so much of importance of money shares dividends loans i understand where is the money coming from and coming to that that's where macro policy is important that part so this what uh, the financial system does and what i will do i will primarily concentrate on the first two money and credit and later when you go to a upper level courses you can study finance all right okay now these three items although related to each other would differ from each other so money refers to these medium of exchange or means of payment credit is a loan to be returned with interest finance is either debt finance obtained through sale of bonds and debentures and uh, then there are three types of ownership finances then the equity finance obtained through sale of shares retain earnings of a corporate company and the own finances of the owners of a company partnership company or joint company finances have three types one is the equity finance share finance and also corporate companies have debt finance so they are or they overlap credit and finance overlap there credit is like a debt loan udhar isko kehte ho 
कंपनी का भी ऐसा लेते हैं उधार थ्रू डिबेंचर्स देन द मेन फाइनेंस दैट इंटरेस्ट पीपल आर पीपल लाइक यू इज द इक्विटी फाइनेंस शेयर मार्केट में सर क्या होता है अभी भी एक प्रोजेक्ट कर रहा है एक फाइव नाइन एट एक्स टू नाइन थे कल इज ट्राइंग टू लुक इन टू रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एक्सचेंज रेट्स एंड शेयर मार्केट प्राइसेस सेकेंडरी मार्केट प्राइसेस एम एस सी स्टूडेंट का फिफ्थ ईयर में एक प्रोजेक्ट है तो दिस इज वॉट इंटरेस्ट यू एंड ऑफकोर्स देर आर टू अदर काइंड ऑफ फाइनेंस रिमेंबर रिटेन अर्निंग्स ऑफ अ कॉर्पोरेट कंपनी विच इज अनडिवाइडेड अनडिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रॉफिट विच लाइक अ सेविंग्स ऑफ अ कॉर्पोरेट कंपनी अनडिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रॉफिट द प्रॉफिट हैजन बीन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू द शेयर होल्डर्स प्रॉफिट्स आर थ्री कंसेप्चुअल पार्ट कॉर्पोरेट प्रॉफिट फर्स्ट पार्ट गोज एज टैक्सेज टू द गवर्नमेंट like my income first thing is goes taxes then i have my income which i take home next part is the dividend income last is whatever remains residue is the retained earnings three parts are there so retained earnings and of course you have own finances i'm going to open a shop the other day a fellow was telling me he and his wife trying to open a electric shop i said kyu to kya usi liye to sir ye jama raha hu aap log denge nahi kaise mera dukan khulega own finances he was talking about not having some bank is not giving him a credit he is a small businessman so what he is trying to do he cannot he is not a private limited public limited company he cannot go to bombay stock market or some other stock market or whatever sell shares so what he is trying to do is is utilize his own finances whatever savings he has so that can be another source of finance okay now um before i go further i will show only one slide from this topic today and that will be enough for today's class then we will meet on monday here then this is the standard and this is indian financial system diagram under indian financial system what you have three groups you can say financial institutions financial markets and financial instruments i will talk about that later that's where my focus will be financial instruments like when you are exchanging something between a deficit unit and a surplus unit there has to be an instrument through which you do there has to be an institution and the institution uses an instrument it may be using mutual fund to transfer the money it may be using shares it may be using debentures it may be using a um, uh, loan kind of a system credit system various kinds of systems so i need to talk about that just not institutions so you have institutions operating in specific markets with specific financial instruments that's exactly what happens nothing no big deal all right like a uh, uh, vegetable seller selling something he is operating uh, either individually on part of somebody in a particular market and selling with a particular set of items simple now financial markets there are two types as i told you money and capital market and both these money and capital market in india particularly money market not so much of capital market as both an organized sector and an unorganized sector organized sector kon hai organized sector i will go into the definition of these things organized sector is primarily which say is recognized by rbi in india in money market in case of capital market the organized sector will be which will be recognized by the securities and exchange board of india sebi jisko kehte hu hum log learn these abbreviations they are very important sebi headquarters is in bombay which is also known as the financial capital of india securities and exchange board of india all these things are there institutions every descriptions are there in that book that's like a dictionary professor bolles book you can use that all these things are there in professor bolles book you can buy even 350 rupees 400 rupees you pay to buy a life long asset it has a dictionary like thing you can go to noble order bolles book there's a co-author one of his student is now co-authoring because he's too old to edit it he has retired and he is one of his student as co is co-authoring and it does the editing every year reprint at the age or uh, you can order a book 
everything is written what is SEBI, when was it founded, what kind of an organization structure it has, it, everything it says, what it does, functions are. So, you do not have to go to Google search, you can have it in your room with you. Like a dictionary we carry, na? you can go to Google and find out in Wikipedia or whatever dictionary, if whichever is more comfortable. You can keep Professor Bole's book with you, only 400 rupees or something. Foreign authored books are very expensive, 5000, 6000, 7000 it goes, but these are very inexpensive. Then it has an organized sector which is recognized, which pays taxes regularly to the government, which kind of files in uh, income tax return, which submits its balance sheet to proper authorities as to what the expenses have been, the asset liability position, profit and loss account. That is more organized sector. Lekin aap thela wala le lijiye, jo sabji bech rahe. Ki IIT Kanpur gate mein ek chai wala hai, ye phal wala hai. Ye sab unorganized. To capital money market mein, capital market mein utna nahi. Money market mein unorganized sector bhi hai. Jidhar mein koi accounts maintain nahi hota hai. Nobody keeps an account. Nobody regulates it. They don't pay taxes. Even if they pay, they pay a lump sum tax ad hoc. Koi income tax authority aake kuch chalan laga dete, itna tax aapko dena hai, andat se. There is no cash memo that you will get, Are even shops do not give us cash memo. If you go to rave, I have seen you get a cash memo. Even though in market people do not give me cash memos, old markets of Kanpur. To forget about these shops. Even institutions within IIT go to Mahish store or any store or these places where you regularly transact, buy things, they do not give cash flow. We do not have a habit even. So, that is why people say in any unorganized market is huge, massive, more than the white market. Achha. So, the unorganized market you have, particularly in money market and the organized market which is under the regulation of an authority. In money market, the organized market regulator is whom? Boss, big boss, money market ka, Reserve Bank of India. And with respect to capital market, the SEBI, remember that. Then all these markets have a primary and a secondary section, most of these markets. Some of them are more developed than the others, but most of them have a primary and a secondary section. Primarily is when you are first time going into the transaction, new shares are being sold, which are called IPOs by companies, initial public offer, IPO, learn these languages, terminologies. I know very little, so whatever I know I am giving it to you, you will learn much more later. So, IPOs, when you companies go for IPOs, initial public offer, they advertise in the newspaper, etcetera, etcetera, and they go for a public offer if it is a public limited company. In a private limited company, they would not go to the newspaper, because it is private, it is a private affair. Only 15, 16, 18 people are involved in the company, management, ownership. Shares are bought, all shares are bought by them. In a public limited company, there are millions of shareholders, depending upon the size of the company, how much shares they have sold. So, there is a primary market, but once the shares have been show, sold, then you get into the mood, you have a bad mood suppose and you do not want to sell, you do not want to keep the share, what will you do? You can go to the secondary market and sell it off. So, initial you are bought and then it goes to him. The same thing happens with some kind of debentures or bonds, debt instruments, same thing. Bond has a 5 year period, 10 year period maturity longevity of the bond, but you do not you do want to sell it off after 3 years. In case of mutual fund also you can go to secondary market, but the secondary market is limited to the company, company itself buys it. Suppose you have bought a mutual fund from UTI, it has a lock in period for 3 years and then you want to sell it, it does not have a secondary market, the secondary market is very limited, what happens is the company buys it back. So, it is a transaction with the company again, but a proper secondary market what happens is the ownership hand keeps on changing. So, a share in its lifetime till the company has called back all those shares 
a lifetime, maybe 20 years, 25 years, 15 years, who knows, 50 years, 30 years, lifetime of a share, oh God knows how many times it changes hand. There are very few shares where the initial shareholder remains with the share. The other day there was a news, very interesting news, small small news items are there. When Facebook started, there were a few shareholders only. So, one of the persons who bought the shares is a millionaire now, a billionaire maybe, suddenly he decided to sell off all his Facebook shares, maybe he wants to do something new and an amount abnormal amount has come, unbelievable amount, how much money he made by selling that off, because the prices have gone up in the secondary market, na? prices have gone up, so whoever buy Facebook gives a huge dividend. So, the Facebook shares when he sold them off, how many units he had I do not know, maybe 5 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent of the total shares initial, he made about 60 million dollars or something, just from one transaction, selling off the Facebook shares, initial investor of Facebook, when Facebook started, it was just a news item. So, how do make penny, say this is a typical speculative gain what they do is that uh, they buy a share when the company does where they sell it off because the market price goes up. Simple market price reason going up is the demand supply relationship, the demand for those companies shares go up. So, because they give a rich dividend and they have a good history, good financial standing, people trust them, so they want to buy them. So, a share face value is 10 dollars may be selling in the market at 50 dollars, 60 dollars, 100 dollars. An Indian share which has 10 rupee face value are selling into the market at 250 rupees, 300 rupees, 350 rupees. So, whenever there is an initial public offer you watch out for the news, some company is selling 1 lakh share, 2 lakh share, sell key initial public offer 10 lakhs. Every share has a face value of 10 rupees, but then you hear the news it has been sold at 250 rupees per share. So, people are willing to buy somebody whose face value is 10 at 253 rupees, because they expect to make a huge amount of dividend gain over the course of the life of the share, that is why they buy them. So, the company benefits imagine by selling 10 rupee share it goes back to its bank and deposits 250 rupees per share. So, three types of ownership finances namely equity finance obtained through sale of shares etcetera that happens. So, you have the primary and the secondary market. Now, I come to the last which I will touch upon a little bit financial institutions. There are four kinds of financial institutions there, intermediary, non intermediary, regulatory and other intermediary is who intermediates between the savers and the investors, which means that surplus spending units and the deficit spending units, it intermediates. Can you give an example of intermediary? Banks, but banks are not the only intermediaries in a country like India, there are also non banks who act as intermediaries. You wonder sir, how do they act as non, non banks, how do they intermediate between savers and investors, non banks kaise karte hai? Well, they can simply sell bonds, collect the surplus of the economy from the savers and then invest in companies who needs them. We all know about ICICI bond, IDBI bond and all that, even mutual funds and I hope you know mutual funds what they are. You know the mutual fund business, anybody has a problem with mutual funds, I am using that as an example often. They are not shares, they are not bonds, they are very peculiar kind of thing. Have you heard of mutual funds? Famous companies in India like UTI and every bank or non-bank nearly has a mutual fund scheme. SBI famous mutual fund was SBI Magnum then you have these other mutual fund schemes from other companies either banks or non banks. Do you know mutual fund? Everybody knows it, okay. if you do not know raise your hand, you do not know exactly. Okay. 
Mutual funds are meant for small savers first of all who has little money to save. So, instead of giving the money to the savings account in a bank or a post office they can have buy mutual funds. They are like share certificates every mutual fund like UTI units have a face value 100 rupees, 10 rupees, 200 rupees whatever. So, when you buy a mutual fund you buy not like shares it has a premium you buy exactly at the cost price the face value price. So, suppose 100 rupees the unit value and you buy 10 mutual fund certificates how much money you put in 100 into 10 1000 you are a small saver 1000 UTI say take 1000 invest career. Now, what it does after carrying this money it goes back and pools all that mutual fund money that it has collected by selling somebody bought 10 units somebody bought 100 units somebody may have bought 1 lakh units. So, 1 lakh into 10 10 lakhs is a big saver not a small saver may be a big saver. What it does then it takes the pool and this is called what they call that this is a um, this there is a word there is an expression for that. Then they look into the debt and the equity market how the prices are they which they have been studying throughout which prices are going up which companies are doing well which companies are not doing well. So, they make a, a kind of a fractional investment in the equity market debt market consisting of various companies. Now, these debt markets equity markets give them debt market will give them a promised return on that money to the mutual fund company and the equity market of course, is equity linked uncertainty is there if the company does well then they get a good dividend. So, depending upon how much return comes total return both from the debt market and the equity market mutual fund company then announces a return per unit to these investors. So, instead of you going to the stock market and finding out where to invest the money 1000 rupees mutual fund companies do that on your behalf. So, often if units UTI units etcetera you will find the language is written if you buy a UTI unit tomorrow it will it will say uh, equity linked that means, it is connected to the share market the investment you are going to do, but what they do they instead of not giving them a 0 return or negative return UTI etcetera mutual funds put part of the money in the debt market where there is a promised return unless the company is liquidated then I do not know what happens and a part they put into the equity market and also they go into the government bonds market where it is also promised return. They can go there they can invest in government bonds also long term bonds which are called dated government securities long term government bonds called dated government securities they can also invest there. So, this is the game they play simple and in the process what they do they make some profit probably from themselves and when the return comes at the end of a financial year the money that is distributed back like a dividend to unit holders mutual fund holders like a dividend it is like whatever income they make they of course, from the gross income they deduct the administrative costs of running the company there are people hired there are non personal costs overhead costs electricity bills AC bills whatever whatever they get a net return value then they distribute that all right. So, you have the intermediate institutions then you have non intermediate you do not go to market at all. So, how do they carry out this helping out the deficit units they do not go to the savers at all well they have usually a source of funds from these big institutions the big institutions may be like the RBI the world bank Asian development bank government of India or RBI subsidiaries like IDBI or IDBI subsidiaries like SIDB SIDBI they are all subsidiaries of one another RBI founded IDBI after IDBI was founded RDBI founded SIDB then SIDB founded God knows how many institutions this is going on. So, SIDB goes to the market no non intermediate institutions famous ones in India like IDBI and SIDB, but the distinction is getting blurred a little bit. So, where do they have the money from 
and the IDBI says we invest large scale industrial development my goodness large scale industrial development mein jitna rupiah lagte hai iron and steel plant fertilizer plant chemical plants machineries massive amount of investments where do they get the money from banks cannot give them so this is how it is done they get non market sources they have so i will talk about that a little bit if i find time non intermediaries they don't intermediate they don't come to you and me but it is getting blurred because idbi also sells bonds a little bit they were famous in the mid 90s idbi flexi bond they were called you were very young then you won't remember idbi flexi bond it became popular very popular i don't know whether they still have it or not some flexibility is there i don't know what flexibility but called idbi flexi bond ach then you have regulatory institutions regulatory institutions i have already said rbi and uh, uh, sebi etc two primary regulatory institutions that i will talk about i will talk about only rbi a little bit and often there are some regulatory institutions that are developing who does regulation on behalf of the mother organization like rbi they divested the responsibility to, like i cannot teach this entire class so i call my tutor and say part of this class like the tutorials etc you conduct the rbi and institutions do that they often do that and you have other institutions they are very fascinating they are fantastic <coughs> variety of other institutions most famous of them are the credit rating agencies i will talk about that later other institutions credit rating agencies credit rating agencies are um names are like crisil etc crisil crisil abbreviation c capital c capital r capital i capital s capital i capital l crisil credit rate means is very interesting is like a doctor when you are ill you go to the doctor and get a health certificate it takes your pulse it takes your blood does pathological test and gives a report a company may be asked to go get the credit rating done basically it will examine the financial health of the company and it will give a grade like you get a grade at iit kanpur a a plus and their grades are like triple a double a triple b open foreign news channels they talk about credit rating of european organizations done by credit rating agencies and how they are been downgraded they talk about these days downgrading that means it was a triple a institution now it is only a triple b institution downgraded them that means its financial health however it examines it's an enormous work number crunching and all that and comes up with a grade for a company and i will tell you why these other organizations like credit rating organizations important because often regulatory organizations like rbi tells or sebi tells a company oh you want to sell shares ipo get a credit rating done come back with that report like you are going to join army okay get a health check up done then i will give you permission to join the army you know in army there is a compulsory health checking that kind of thing so often the regulation part involves those the activities which have developed these other organizations like credit rating agencies crisil etc this is the basic kind of the summing up or the or the kind of summary of uh, the financial system in india now i need to talk about more of course this whole topic is on that but i hope you have been following me on this part 